Coming right up, a special edition of Straight Talk, Long Beach Water. Our guest tonight, Kevin Wadier, General Manager of the Long Beach Water Department, and Matt Lyons, Director of Planning and Conservation, as we continue our 23rd anniversary year. Straight Talk is brought to you in part by the Port of Long Beach, a leader in international trade and environmental stewardship. And the Press-Telegram, your local news leader for over 100 years. And Scan Health Plan, for your health and independence. Join us for tonight's edition of Straight Talk. And now your host, Art Levine. Good evening and welcome to Straight Talk. We have a great show for you tonight on a very important subject, water. And uh, our guest is Kevin Wadier, General Manager of the Long Beach Water Department. Kevin, welcome back to Straight Talk. It's great to be here again, Art. I think it's your, first, or your tenth visit on our show. Mm -hmm. And we're taping this show on November 5th, the day after the elections. And uh, as most of you know, the water bond passed uh, two to one. Right. I think I think you know people are really concerned about the drought, and I think that's what really put the water bond over the top. Seven and a half billion, right. uh, uh, of which seven one is new money, and right. four hundred four hundred million is a repayment. But uh, what does that mean uh, for our drought situation? Well, I think it's important to remember that here in Southern California, we're all tied together. So it's important what happens, you know, throughout all of Southern California to all of us. And uh, what's most important to me, at least in terms of this water bond, is some uh, large amount of money that's all in the bond, almost a billion dollars, to clean up some of our local groundwater basins. Fortunately, not here in Long Beach, but particularly in Los Angeles and maybe in the San Gabriel Valley, because those groundwater basins are critical to in meeting our water supply needs for the future. And the drought water basin captures water, rainwater, and other water in good years exactly. for, for, the, for the lean years. Yeah, Los Angeles in particular has a very aggressive plan to clean up their groundwater basin. Then they can catch more, more rainwater, use the groundwater basin to store it, and also to put their recycled water in there when they don't need it so they can store their recycled water to use it later. So it's really the, the focus of, of, of that situation. But anything built with the bond money will not help us in the current drought. Uh, talk about the current drought situation. This is a very, very serious drought. Um, uh, you know, a lot of people say this is the worst ever. It's not the worst ever, but it's a very serious drought. Um, you know, we've had historic droughts in California in the past, and, and 19 to 28 to 1934 was probably the worst drought. We had a very serious drought in 87 to 92. So we've had droughts like this in the past. What's different about this drought is really two things. Number one, we have a lot more people here. Uh, we had about 12 million people in Southern California in the last major drought, 87 to 92. We have about 19 million people here now. So we have more than 50% more people here. And quite frankly, a lot of them are living in hotter, drier, more inland areas. So the impact on the water supply is even more dramatic than that population increase. The other thing we have is we have, because of some of the environmental impacts of some of our import of water systems, the amount of water that they can bring into Southern California has been reduced. So we've got more people uh, and additional restrictions. So this drought, even though we're only in the third year, uh, hopefully the third and final year uh, of it, but um, it's very, very serious. Our reservoirs are in very, very serious condition here in California. Let's take a look. You know, they say one picture is worth a thousand words. Here are two pictures that will say everything. This is Lake Orville in 2011 and we get our state project water from from this lake. Lake Oroville is the main reservoir on the state water project. There's other reservoirs along the way but Lake Oroville is the one that catches all the water that becomes the, the water supply for the state water project which the Metropolitan Water District is one of the customers for and and then we get some of our water from them so it's uh, come down dramatically in the, in the last few years. Here is Lake Oroville today. Yeah, in fact, that's a, that's a couple months ago, and and at the rate it's going, <laughs> at the rate it's going, probably by about, even lower than this. Probably about by the time this show airs, it'll be the lowest ever uh, in its history. Well, we cannot build ourselves out of this problem, and uh, we don't know what's going to happen next year weather-wise. If we have a plentiful year, uh, we maybe dodge the bullet a little bit. But if we don't, if we have a fourth bad year. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
we're in serious trouble. What I've been saying for several months now, and of course every month my, my speech changes, and so, so at this point, we're five months away, uh, because this winter is it, it, is it. We're five months away if this winter's dry from the worst crisis in water in California, period. In, in our history? In our history. We're five months away With from With 19 it. million people now. Right, and what we know now, you know, we have basically five months a year in California when we get all of our rain, November through March. And we now know that we've lost the first half of November. It's bone dry throughout all of California for the first half of November. So we've lost at least one half of the first month of that wet period. Wow. So this is getting very, very serious. Well, in the next segment, we're going to talk about conservation. But uh, uh, people, at least, I think, are becoming more aware. Uh, it's, it's, it's seeped into the public consciousness that we have a problem, Houston. Yeah, I think so, and Long Beach, of course, has been in the lead on that, but I think with all the attention, you know, the graphic photos like this one that we showed and others and the media attention, it's really important. I think people are finally really getting it that this is a very, very serious problem. And to your credit and that of uh, the department, you've been proactive and a leader in conservation over many years. You're known statewide and nationally mm -hmm. as, as one who uh, looks at the facts and seeks to adjust because of those facts. Well, we believe that we need to permanently reduce our water consumption here in Southern California, not just during droughts like the one we're in, but we need to reduce our consumption in normal years and wet years because, like we talked earlier, you need to be able to refill those reservoirs, whether you're talking about above ground reservoirs like Lake Oroville, like the pictures we saw, or below uh, level groundwater aquifers. You've got to be able to fill those in normal and wet years, and, and we've got to bring our, de our demand down. So we've got to conserve all the time so that we can refill those reservoirs in normal, normal years so we can use it in dry years. And the department has been very proactive in engaging the public in this conservation efforts. We'll be speaking with Matt Lyons in the next segment, but I want to point out that uh, you produce uh, uh, print ads and also public service announcements on television. And in the segment we're going to go to, uh, be, in the break we're going to go to before the next segment, we have one of your marvelous PSAs running, and the music was written by, by kids in town. You had a competition, and right. they came up with songs and words, and then it was put to animation, and you'll see the, the dancing bubble. Well, we've tried to make it fun because we believe that human behavior change is the entire key to this thing. This is not just about, you know, rebates or... Yeah. fixtures or grass. It's about human behavior change. So w we believe that the most important factor is educating the public of the need and, and the importance of this. And so, yeah, we've done lots of fun things, and it's all about getting the word out that this is very, very important. Okay, in the next segment, we're going to be joined by Matt Lyons, who's in charge of the conservation efforts. But stay tuned right now and look for Mervyn the Droplet. Um, Mervyn the d Dancing Machine. Mervyn the Dancing Machine, uh, <laughs> encouraging you to save water. We'll be right back after these messages. At the Port of Long Beach, we're not only delivering jobs, smart ideas, and forward-thinking environmental initiatives, we're also delivering opportunity for all of Southern California. Oh, and a clearer horizon line. To learn more, go to polb.com, the port of Long Beach, thinking outside the docks.
There's a world of opportunity available through the College of Continuing and Professional Education at Cal State Long Beach. Does your career involve legal work, law enforcement, fraud investigation, or crime scene analysis? You can increase your skill level and enhance your career by enrolling in the Basic Applied Forensic Science and Crime Analysis Certificate Program. For more information, contact the College of Continuing and Professional Education at Cal State Long Beach. We're back, joined now by Matt Lyons, who is the Director of Planning and Conservation for Long Beach Water. Matt, welcome back to Straight Talk. Thank you very much. You're the conservation guy. Tell us about uh, what you do. Well, uh, we have a lot of different conservation programs for our customers uh, in Long Beach. Uh, rebates for things like high efficiency toilets and high efficiency clothes washers and that sort of thing. One of our most popular program is what we call our Lawn to Garden program. And Lawn to Garden is designed to help people replace their, uh, their grass lawns with landscapes that thrive naturally in our semi-arid region. So as you know, in Long Beach, we get very little rainfall. And so we're categorized as semi-arid. If we got just a little bit less, we'd actually be categorized as a desert area. Wow. And so these landscapes that we're promoting actually thrive naturally in this kind of an environment. And so the Lawn to Garden program, uh, it's an award-winning program. And we really do, in a way, uh, several different things to help our customers make this transition uh, to this beautiful And drop. one of the most important things is we have a rebate of $3.50 up to 1,000 square feet. So that's $3,500. And here is a before picture, and there's nothing like before pictures. We'll take a look at that. Tell us what this is about. So this is a typical front yard in Long Beach. You see a lot of grass. And the thing about the grass is that it is not, of course, native to this area, and it requires about 80 inches of water uh, coming through the irrigation system per year in order to sustain. So grass is thirsty and consumes a lot of water, and these drought-friendly, succulent plants, whatever, uh, <laughs> are beautiful and uh, uh, use less water. They use a lot less water, and if you think about it, uh, these are plants that are native to regions like Long Beach, but from throughout the world. And so they lived for a millennia uh, before irrigation systems were invented. And quite often we'll put a little bit of water on them anyway, just because we like to keep them really green and looking really nice. But the point is, you're right, they use very little water compared to a grass lawn. And here's the headquarters of Long Beach Water, and you have a demonstration garden right in the front there, and it's beautiful, and it doesn't use a lot of water. So you're walking the walk right in your headquarters. That's correct. And there's signage for the plant, so if you see a plant there that you like, you can just look at the sign, and you'll know what it is. And we have uh, drip irrigation and that sort of thing. And I understand some 1,400 families have had their lawns replaced with, uh, with these uh, appropriate plants. Yes, a little over uh, 1,400 now. So uh, that translates to about 1.5 million square feet of grass have been replaced from this program, directly from this program. There's also... Um, uh, evidence that a lot of other landscapes have been replaced. Uh, neighbors see it and they don't go through the program, but they still do it. So there's still money available if you're interested in having your lawn replaced and getting up to $3,500 rebate. Uh, contact uh, LB Water. Uh, the website will be put up at the end of this segment. Uh, you also have classes and people get into this and free landscaping classes on Saturday, three hours, 40 to 80 people there. Uh, it's a fun thing to do. It's great. Uh, people love it. And we have about uh, five or six different instructors. Uh, we have about uh, seven or eight different kinds of classes. And people can sign up on our website or they can give us a call and we'll uh, reserve a place for them. And so we cover subjects like uh, designing your landscape, uh, choosing plants. Uh, we have one class just on succulents, and there's some gorgeous succulents which require no water at all, and they're just beautiful plants. And how to install uh, 
a hardscape, but one that's permeable so water can still come through. So if you want to put a pathway through your landscape um, that uh, won't generate runoff, um, we have class on that. Well, that so. sounds perfect for someone like me. I do not have a green thumb, and I've proven conclusively on more than one occasion that plants cannot live without water. <laughs> <laughs> and congratulations on your whole effort, your award-winning effort. Uh, uh, we're getting the community behind this effort. Uh, we saw Conserve and Mervyn, the PSA, in the last commercial break. And, and people are, uh, I mean, we do have the, the authority to impose penalties, but, but people are voluntarily getting with the program. That's correct. Uh, it's one of the things we're really proud of uh, at the Long Beach Water Department is the Long Beach community. You know, we've really been setting records in terms of reduction in water use, and it's been by, you know, really the people of Long Beach, people of goodwill, uh, once they know uh, the problem that's out there about the drought and they understand the restrictions, uh, almost everybody just does the right thing. And it's something for Long Beach, I believe, to be very proud of. And Kevin, you mentioned earlier that there's no way we can build our way out of the problem. The only solution is conservation. Conservation and human behavior change. And because of that, we've, restrict, <laughs> we've resisted the temptation to become water cops. I mean, a lot of people say, you know, we should really hammer somebody. Um, and we could do that, but we know that that wouldn't work long term. We know that people would hate us. And so we've tried to make this very positive, very exciting, something that our community feels great about. And we're real happy the way it's gone. And currently we're restricted to three days a week of watering, right. but the plan is shortly to go to two we're days. We're going to be considering two days a week just during the winter months. And two days a week is plenty in, uh, in the winter months here in Long Beach. Matt, we have 30 seconds, final words to our viewers on anything. Well, I would encourage people to go to our website, and especially the Lawn to Garden website. Uh, this is an award-winning website, and it's been copied by other water agencies. It's designed based on surveys we've done of our customers. What do you need to be successful in terms of replacing your grass lawn with a drought-tolerant landscape? And this is what we've come up with, and it's wonderful, and we encourage you to and visit And the website it. for that Lawn to Garden program is? www.lblawntogarden.com. And lawn two is it is a T O T T O T O. Lawn, thank you. For lawn asking. two garden. <laughs> Matt, thank you so much for joining us. And congratulations on your award-winning programs. Thanks. Okay, we'll be back with more of our show after these messages. How do you like your chances the rest of the way? I got no idea. But I do know that if we stay with Naples Rib Company, at least we won't go hungry. Coach, what do you think about some of those questionable calls tonight? Oh, yeah, but if you want a sound call, I'd call Naples Rib Company. You can't miss on that call. Then Naples Rib Company is part of your game plan? There really is nothing more motivating than a great barbecue meal at Naples Rib Company. Victory or not, Naples Rib Company, great game plan. Founded in 1976, Polly's Gourmet Coffee is Southern California's most complete gourmet coffee store. Polly's has the best tasting coffee, freshly roasted every day right in the store. Plus a wide selection of teas, an in-house bakery, espresso bar, patio dining, and more. We also offer Wi-Fi, free internet access for all of our customers. Our nationwide clientele agree, when it comes to coffee, there's only one name to remember. Polly's, 4606 East 2nd Street, welcoming you into Belmont Shore. When I was a boy growing up in Italy, I had a dream to own my own store. I came to the United States and I worked hard as a tailor. Hi, I'm Umberto. I've been in Long Beach since 1960, carrying the finest quality men's clothing. It was a long way away, but styles are just around the corner. Umberto, 2141 Belfar, Long Beach. I think the dancing started right around the time we got Charter. All of a sudden, he's downloading all these music videos and prancing around like some show pony. I even caught him dancing along to musicals on demand. I've never seen him so much as tap his foot. I just didn't get it. And then one day, I did. Get TV, internet, and phone for $29.99 each per month. Charter, make way for more. We're back, continuing this fascinating discussion of water with a real expert, Kevin Wadier, head of the Long Beach Water Department. 
And of course, the structure of the Water Department is uh, that of a board of water commissioners. Right. And Harry Salsgaver is the president. Yours truly serves as a commissioner. And one of our colleagues, John Allen, was just elected uh, uh, on November 4th to the Board of Water Replenishment. Uh, tell us about that. Well, that's great. We're really happy that he's moving over there because the Water Replenishment District actually was formed by us and other groundwater producers back uh, about uh, 50 years ago to replenish our groundwater basin because it's not naturally replenished enough, so it needs to be artificially replenished. And so they have a very important mission of replenishing the basin so that we can produce our groundwater from it. And we get about 60% of our water from our groundwater basin, and they replenish it with a combination of local water first. That's free. Of course, we haven't had hardly any of that the last two years, sure. so that's really been depleted dramatically. And then import of water, which, as we talked earlier, is really hard to get uh, right now. That's really restricted. And then the third source, and the one they've been the most successful about, is using recycled water, which is highly treated wastewater, to replenish the basin. So, so he's going over there at a very critical time. Well, congratulations to John Allen on his election to this important but really unknown entity. It's a down ballot well, thing. No one knows what it does. They're not unknown to there. us. But it's very important. And, uh, of course, Mayor Garcia will now make a nomination for an appointment sure. to replace John on our board. Right. Uh, also, congratulations to you, Kevin. Uh, I mentioned earlier of your statewide and national reputation of being a leader in conservation and proactive uh, measures. And you were recently honored at the annual meeting uh, of the uh, Cal Southern California Water Committee with the Honorable Harriet Weeder Leadership Award for your uh, cutting-edge work in, in conservation. And I was at the dinner, 300 people there at the Universal Sheridan. It was a lovely evening, and uh, I want to publicly congratulate you. Well, thank, thank you, Art. And what I said when I received the award is this is really a, an award for the people of the city of Long Beach. It's because of what Long Beach has done that, that I received this award. It's because of the tremendous job we're doing at Long Beach on conservation that, that we the, really we received this award. Well, well said. And also in the current holiday issue of our Straight Talk magazine, seen here, we have a nice article uh, about you and receiving that award. Uh, I'd like to spend a moment just getting close and personal with, uh, with you so our viewers have a chance. Uh, you're an engineer by training. Uh, you worked at the Met for 13 years. You've right. been here for how many years? A little over 13. 13 years. And uh, uh, just tell us where you get your passion for water. Well, it's funny, you know, you mentioned I'm an engineer, and I, one of the jokes I like to talk, say when I talk to groups is, you know, I, you know, most engineers grew up, you know, using slide rules and calculators I remember that, to yeah. engineer the size of a pipe or whatever, and, and yeah. totally what I'm doing now is engineering public attitudes about water. I mean, that's, that's the only thing I do, is educate people on the importance of conserving water, and, uh, you know, so I like to say I've gone from engineering you know, how big a pipe should be to engineering public opinion about water here in Southern California. It really is. And as we've said several times on this show, there's no way out other than conservation. That's the only we way out. We can build all the dams we want. Ten years from now, maybe it'll have an impact. But right now, conservation is the only answer. It's the only solution. This crisis is right here, right now. And uh, if you were a betting man, mm -hmm. what would you say the odds are of us having uh, another bad year, a fourth year in a row that would put us deeply in the hole. And what would that mean, uh, conservation? I mean, uh, our water is being cut because of the drought. Well, just simply statistically speaking, you know, one third of our years here in California are dry, one third are wet, and one third are, third are normal. But actually, uh, hydrologic sequences tend to say that uh, that dry years come in cycles. So there's a, at least a one-third chance that this is going to be a dry year. And we, of course, we already know that we're halfway through November and it's been bone dry, quite frankly, for the first uh, half of November. So, you know, we don't know. And we don't know whether this is the fourth or fifth or sixth or seventh year. We know we've had five, six, seven-year droughts in California. So that's why conservation is so important. It's why we can't wait because we don't know how long this is going to go on. And if the worst comes to pass, then we as a water board 
uh, will nece by necessity have to impose more severe restrictions. Well, we're in a good position in Long Beach because of what we've done and what we've accomplished the way the Metropolitan Water District would do it if they, if they do declare a shortage, which I think it's almost virtual certainty they will in 2015. And we get our water from we, the Metropolitan We get about 40% from them and about 60% from our groundwater basin, but they have a, a, a gallons per capita per day limit, a floor that they won't go below, and, and we're about 10% above that now. So if we can reduce our demand from by 10% from where we are right now today, then we won't be cut any more than that. And I know we can do that. We, not, we need to get everyone to, to pitch in, and they're doing it, as you mentioned earlier, and as Matt mentioned, uh, Long Beach is a great city for a cooperative spirit. And yes, we can, and yes, we will do it. We will, and I have the, uh, the most confidence in Long Beach uh, possible. They're just going to do it. We know they are. And we're going to lead the state through this drought like we did the last time. Amen to that. We'll be right back with the rest of our show after these messages. Bill Trainees mixes California style with continental cuisine that includes fresh seafood from around the world. Since Bill is the chef, the menu has a wide variety of pastas, salads, soups, and appetizers that feature his unique personal touch. And the Italian-American signature dishes are simply beyond delicious. You never know who you're going to run into at Trainees, from the famous sports legends on the Wall of Fame to local celebrities having a drink at the bar. For the best fine dining experience, visit Bill Trainees. At Performance Plus Tire, you'll find we carry Toyo tires. For over 50 years, Toyo has been a world leader in the development of high-quality tires. Optimum performance, safety, and a comfortable ride. That's what makes Toyo tires great. And now come into Performance Plus Tire for a great deal on these Toyo tires. Proxies ST, Open Country AT, and Proxies 4. Toyo tires, driven to perform. Come in today and we'll install new Toyo tires on your vehicle while you wait. Performance Plus Tire on Cherry Avenue, one mile north of the 405 in Long Beach. those who are closest to you, from our family to yours. McCarty's Jewelry, since 1932. There's a world of opportunity available through the College of Continuing and Professional Education at Cal State Long Beach. Would you like to move ahead in the field of human resources and personnel management? Sign up for the Human Resources Management Certificate Program. You'll learn how to expand your knowledge and skills and advance in this dynamic industry. For more information, contact the College of Continuing and Professional Education at Cal State Long Beach. I think we're very fortunate to have here in Long Beach a quality Long Beach Water Department and a man of the reputation of Kevin Wadier running it. And uh, I have no doubt that we will do our part in Long Beach uh, uh, to weather uh, this storm. And, uh, Kevin, again, congratulations on your award and uh, final thoughts to our viewers. Well, you know, whenever I talk to the public, people always, some people always say, what can I do? What can I do? And, you know, people have their list, you know, to turn off the water when you brush your teeth and all that. But when I talk to groups, what I like to say is everybody's life is different. And there's dozens of things that you can do in your daily life. You know, simple things like, you know, catch the water when you're warming up the shower. And if you just think about it, if, if it's right here in front of your brain, thinking about all the time, what can I do, what can I do, you'll come up with things that, that you know, are unique to your life. And if everybody pitches in, Long Beach is going to do a great job. Well said. Thank you again for joining us, Kevin. Thank you, Art. And thank you at home for being our guest. Please be with us next week for the next edition of Straight Talk. Good night, everyone. Straight Talk has been brought to you by the Port of Long Beach, the Press-Telegram, and Scan Health Plan. And remember, Straight Talk is viewable 24-7 at straighttalktv.com.